Hi everyone, I am Deepan Kamani and I am going to present today's knowledge on continuous deployment using Argo CD. So we will look into what these, are, these terms mean. But before that, uh, let's look into the knowledge etiquettes. You should be punctual to join the knowledge sessions. You should uh, at least join five minutes before. Be sure to leave feedbacks as it will be helpful for the presenters and be sure to keep your phone in silent and avoid all kind of disturbances. So nextly, uh, let's look at today's agenda. Uh, first, we'll look what look into what GitOps is, what, why we need GitOps. Then we'll look into what Argo CD is and its components. And then we'll see how the workflow is when we use the Argo CD. And we'll look into a quick demo. So, if you might wonder, uh, the topic is about Argo CD and why we are starting, what is GitOps, right? So I'll go through GitOps and I will tell you what it actually means and how it is related to Argo CD. <clears throat> uh, GitOps is an operating module model for deployment on Kubernetes and other cloud native language technologies. So in simpler language, let's consider we have a GitHub repo where we store all the manifests all the application codes which we want to get deployed, which we want deployed in a target environment, right? And we have a target environment. Now, what the GitOps tool will do, it will keep track of the GitHub repo and the branch, and it will deploy all those manifests into the target environment. So this is this is what a GitOps tool does. And it continuously keeps track of the repo and if there is any change in the manifest and this uh, let me point that this manifest defined in the github repo is the target state is the desired state we want our target uh, deployment environment to be let's say uh, in the github repo we mentioned that we want four replicas so we want the desired state to have four replicas now if we change it to five the Git GitOps tool it is continuously tracking the GitHub repo. What it will do, it will pick up those changes and deploy it, make those changes to the current state in the target environment. So it also provides continuous delivery as well as deployment. It means we make a change to the GitHub repo. We make some new, we want some new deployments. We want some new replicas. Make those changes in the repo and it will be deployed within few seconds. And it also provides features like automated rollback and different deployment strategy strategies. We can roll back to previous version. We can, we, it supports also different deployment strategies like blue, green, canary, okay? So now let's look into why we need GitOps, right? Previously we had Jenkins, Circle CI, Travis CI. We even had GitHub Actions, right? They are CI tools, but they also provided CD so that we can deploy to a target environment. So what is the need of these separate GitOps continuous delivery or deployment tool. So in the traditional CI CD tools like Jenkins, Travis CI, they do not have the visibility in the deployment environment. What this means is that the, uh, once the CI CD pipeline runs, it will deploy uh, the manifest into the environment, but then it will not show you if the deployment is successful, if after, after the deployment, the pod has failed or anything. It will not show you those knowledge, those details. It will show you that the deployment is successful, but under the hood, the deployment might not be successful. The pod, the containers, the application might have failed due to some un, due to some reasons which we don't know. So this is one of the problem. Secondly, most of the CI tools like Travis CI, Circle CI, Build Kite, GitHub Actions, they are all managed services and we want our target environment to always be secure. So we, it is all, always pub, um, private and not publicly open. So if we want the CI services to make some changes in the target environment, we'll need to provide the CI tools with the authentication, with the credentials so that it can authenticate and authorize itself to make those changes. So that will be a different problem because these sensitive credentials will have the risk of being misplaced. And moreover, let's say we deployed a version and it failed. We'll have to manually roll back it because <clears throat> there will be no automated rollback situation. And they, suppose some of the developers or operations guy made some changes into the target environment and it uh, risks and it caused some misconfigurations. So 
if the guy if the guy who made the changes couldn't detect the error so it will be a hectic task because we'll have to decide we'll have to detect what changed from the last time so we'll have no track of what the manual changes are and what the misconfigurations can be so now let's look into what is argo cd and how it solves all all these problems that i just mentioned so starting with argo cd uh in the previous session uh adesh gave you a demo on demo and a session on what kubernetes is and what are the services so argo cd is a gitops continuous delivery and deployment tool built only for kubernetes so with argo cd we automate all the deployments and delivery of the applications in the kubernetes because as we know kubernetes is really growing these days and we want a way to automate these deployments these workloads in the kubernetes and argo cd solves this argo cd is a gitops tool so what it does it tracks a github repo and track all at the same time tracks the current environment it compares the state defined in the repo and the current state in the target environment and if there is a change in the repo it will apply those changes and make necessary changes in the repo and suppose we have some problems we have some problems in the application deployment we can roll back with a there is automated rollback or we can roll back with a single button so it is that easy moreover uh, the argo cd provides the di different kubernetes manifest plugins like helm charts plain yaml customize we can create we can create yaml manifest using these and argo cd will support them and will understand them and will deploy them to the target environment so argo cd automates the deployment of desired application states the application deployment can tra track updates to branches tags or pin specific version of manifest so it tracks the github repo as i said <clears throat> so let's look into the argo cd components argo cd is built of some major components firstly there is the api server the api server exposes a http or https and a grpc endpoint so what it does the api exposed by the api server is used by the web ui this web ui or the web interface is provided by argo cd and it is an elegant web ui where we can see all the statuses argo cd also has a cli tool or we can integrate with other ci systems so this api server provides us with an endpoint which we can integrate with these and it also performs the basic authentication and authorization and suppose there is some changes in the github repo so we need to synchronize the changes made to the current state so it also calls these operations like sync or rollback secondly we have the repository server right so as it is tracking the repository server it should maintain a local store of what the repository contains previously so what repo server does it maintains a local cache of the repo and continuously pulls the uh, configured repo and checks if there is any change and caches it and downloads it and maintains our local cache and now what application controller does the cache maintained by the repository server application controller will look into that and will check if the state defined in the repo is same as the current state and if it is not so it will make all those necessary changes to make them equal and redis server it is a redis database and it is used by the repo server to maintain the cache as repo server is stateless and redis server is used to store, uh, store those cache and we have also another component the dex server the argo cd provides authentication and authorization at a basic level but what if you are a big organization and you have already a different identity provider like auth0 or ldap or azure ad right so you what you would want that we want to integrate the argo cd with those features and not have to manage another uh, uh, other identity provider so dex server gives us a way so that we can integrate the argo cd and the external identity provider and then we have application and project and these are custom resource definition created when we deploy the argo cd an application is a group of kubernetes resources and project is a group of application and we'll look into it into them for in further details when i go into the demo
So let's quickly look at the features of Argo CD. It is a dedicated GitOps tool to automate deployment to Kubernetes. It provides health status for the deployed application, it uses Git repo as the source of truth, and it is Kubernetes native. And the best part is it is deployed within the cluster. So there is no issue, there is no problem of the credentials getting exposed outside the cluster because Argo CD is Kubernetes native and it is deployed within the cluster. And one of the other feature is that let's suppose we have three clusters, three Kubernetes clusters, and we deployed Argo CD in one cluster. And with that single instance of Argo CD, we can manage deployment into the two other clusters. So we do not have to deploy Argo CD again and again. It supports different tools to generate Kubernetes manifest. As I said, customize Helm. It supports all of them. And we can also add custom plugins. It exposes HTTP as well as HTTPS endpoint for security. It has an elegant UI and it also supports Webhook. So, and these are some key features in Argo CD. In Argo CD, a sync operation is called the process in which the desired current state is converted to the desired state mentioned in the repo. And there are some health statuses. When our application is healthy, it means that the application live and the desired state are both equal. The out of sync means that the live state is not equal to the desired state. A progressing means that the application is in uh, ongoing the process of sync and will soon soon be healthy. And if it is degraded, it means that uh, maybe some application pods have crashed or have some issues and if it is unknown so the argo cd does not have any idea about the health status of the application it sometimes means that the application might have become unresponsive so let's look at the ci cd workflow with argo cd so in here we can see we have a github repo and the user makes some changes to the github repo and this repo server we can see from the arrow the repo server tracks the github repo and as it tracks the github repo and the application controller what it does it looks into the managed application, the current state, and looks into the repo server. Once a change is pushed to the GitHub repo, the repo server will cache it, and the application controller will compare the state in the repo server and in the cluster. And once it sees a change, it will make those changes. And from this to error, we can see that we can make changes to this application, not only from the GitHub repo, we can also make some changes to it through Argo CD CLI and Argo ABY. So, and here we can see there are two clusters. So from using one Argo CD, we can manage deployment in multiple clusters. So let's look into a quick demo, how this will work. <clears throat> so if anyone have any question till now, you can ask, then we can go on to the demo. So I take it as a no. And okay, let's go into the demo. So here, if I open my VS code, I'll show you how Argo CD is deployed. It is deployed as a Helm chart. I created a sample values file for the Helm chart. And I'll just go through the main part, uh, which is important. Uh, here we have the repository con uh, configured, the repo, which it will uh, track by default. We can also add a repo uh, later after it is deployed, but I just uh, configured it at the starting. So we can also configure it later. I'll show you that too. And our Argo CD is available at this endpoint. So I'll just copy this endpoint. And yeah, I'll show you it is deployed. If I do helm list hyphen n Argo CD in the Argo CD namespace, we have the Argo CD deployed. And I'll do Q ctl get pod hyphen argo cd in the argo cd namespace we have these pods running the application controller as i said the dex server redis server the repo server and the argo cd server which provides us the endpoint http endpoint and the ui so i don't know what it is yeah if i go to that link if i go to that link it will open me the Argo CD, the Argo CD UI, which I have talked about. I'll log in. If I log in, we have an elegant UI. Nothing is deployed for now, so it is showing no applications yet. I'll go through all the different options and then we'll 
configure our new application to be deployed first let's go to the settings here we have the repositories so here i have the repo configured the practice argo repo and we can add different repo using ssh or using https or we can also use add another repo using github app and nextly we have certificate these are certificates as argo cd will keep track of a repo so it will should be a https connection so these are ca certificates for all those repo and these are some gnu keys i have not added any these are to verify some commits and here we have all the list of cluster we can add this cluster add more clusters to it and it is done through the cli only so we cannot do it from the gui but we can add more clusters to it there is a project the default project and as i said a project is a logical collection of applications suppose there are five teams working in the same argo cd we can create five different projects and their respective deployments will be in their project so for now i have a default project and i intend to use that i'll not create a new project for now here we have the account the current account the current account is admin and all the capabilities and we can also create tokens for it and we can use this token with ci cd pipelines to integrate with them and here we have the user info the username and the who issued the username and the password we can also update the password and so for now let's create an application we can create application in two ways through the, by writing an eml or from the gui so at first i will show you the gui so here i'll okay before that i'll show you what the repo is configured to be if i go here so i have a I have two folders, a uh, charts Apache 2 and the dev folder. In the dev folder, I have a Nginx deployment. I have a Nginx deployment, a service and a ingress to expose the service. And for the Apache 2, we have a sample Helm chart. I used both of the kinds to show you that Argo CD supports both of them. Here, I'll just go to the values file. Here, we have a Apache 2 deployment. And we have a cluster IP service and I have an ingress which exposes the service at this link. So at first let's give it a name. I'll say Apache 2 and I'll select the project which is default and sync policy. Yeah, I did not say about the sync policy. Sync policy, there are two kinds, manual. What manual means, suppose there are some changes in the GitHub repo. What Argo CD will do, it will pick up the changes, but it will not deploy it to the current environment. It will show you that it is out of sync. There are new changes, but the, the admin will have to approve those changes to be deployed. So what it does, it, it prevents unauthorized changes to the target environment. And it also is called as the continuous delivery where someone has to approve the changes. And in automated, here what it does, any changes made to the repo will soon be picked up and will be deployed. So for now, let's uh, do let's do automatic. And here are two options, prune resources and selfie. Now prune resources is, suppose we have four replicas running. And for now, we say that we change the state in the repo and we said now let's run two replicas. If we have prune resources enabled, so what it will do to run the two replicas, it will terminate the other two to match the state. But if we do not have the prune resources enabled, it will keep all those pods running. And if we have cell fill, the cell fill means that if we make any manual changes, these manual changes will be nullified and the state will be reverted back to what it is defined in the GitHub repo. So I'll pick all those two and I'll say auto create namespace. So it means that if we want to deploy to a namespace, the, if the namespace does not exist, the namespace will be created. And I'll say prune last. It means that if any deletion of resources is to be done, it should be done at the last after everything is applied. And I'll leave all this to the default. And for repository URL, see when I click here, I have my list of repo. I'll select it. And here I'll select the revision. Here I can select the head, which means the latest commit, or we can select a branch. I'm selecting the main branch and I'm saying it is showing me the path to the help chart. So I'll just select it, chart Apache 2. So we have the source from where the where the repo, which repo will be tracked and from where the 
manifest will be picked up and for destination we will select cluster url the kubernetes default svc means the current cluster the cluster in which argo cd is deployed and i'll say let's create a namespace say knowledge apache and i'll uh, these are all helm parameters it will require a values file i'll support a uh, provide a values.yaml and i'll leave all this to be default so once these are done i can uh, create I can click on the create button and it will be created. But before that, I want to show you that suppose you want to, these are the configurations and you want to store these configurations as well in the GitHub repo, in the GitHub repo along with this. Uh, let's say here, uh, here I want to make a folder and I want to store them here. So we want them as a YAML, right? So we can do edit as YAML and we'll get an YAML file where we have all those configurations. And I can also copy them and I can make a file, Kubernetes YAML file for it and do kubectl apply. But for now, let's create from the GUI and wait for it to be created. It is showing me missing and it is showing me syncing and it is synced. So an ingress is created and all the pods are created and it is, the app health is showing progressing. And so it means that it is going to be healthy and the ingress is in progressing state let's wait for a few seconds okay till that time it gets healthy let's look into what the values file content okay uh, one second show you what the values file content uh, it contains from uh, okay yeah it shows there should be a replica of four one ingress and one cluster ip service right and a uh, image image of ubuntu apache 2 so if i go here so we can see there are four pods there is a service which i can click for details and i can see it's yaml2 and here i can see it is a type cluster ip and i have an ingress and to verify further i will go here and i'll say kubectl get namespace i'll get the namespace in See, the knowledge Apache was not present and it got created. It cre got created 70 seconds ago by the Argo CD. And what if I do kubectl get all hyphen n and the namespace, we see that actually four pods are running and a cluster IP service is running. And if I do kubectl get ingress hyphen n and the namespace, so the ingress is deployed too. And if I take this uh, URL and I open a new tab and I go to this link. So it is actually running. So the ingress is deployed, the application is deployed and it is running. So now let's do one thing. I'll do, I'll make some changes manually in the cluster and I'll see what happens. So let's do kubectl get deploy hyphen n. Okay, sorry, Apache knowledge, I guess. No, no effort. Yeah. So I'll get the deployment in this namespace and I have this and it is running four pods, four pods it is running. I'll scale the deployment, kubectl scale. I'll scale it to let's say 40, right? And here we can see so many getting created and at the same moment here I can see terminating. If I do kubectl get pod hyphen in knowledge Apache. So see they all are terminating right and if I do again so they are in terminating state and only four of them are healthy. So it will not make you it will not let you make the changes. So let's say we have to do a rollback or we have to do a manual change so for that we have to disable the auto sync and the auto sync is disabled now and now if i again do kubectl scale and let's say make it to eight replicas and we can see that eight pods are getting created if i do kubectl get pod i can knowledge apache i can see the pods are running are in the running stage right and it is showing me out of sync because as here if we see 
if we go to the apache2 values.yml we are saying just run a four replicas but what if we go here it is running eight replicas so it is showing me out of sync and if i do a manual sync if i do a manual sync so it will terminate four of the pods and if i do kubectl get pods again the four of them will be in terminating state and only four will be running so here we saw that we cannot make changes to it and we cannot make any manual changes and it will sync it with the github repo so now let's do one thing let's make a change in the file let's say i'm changing the image to where is the image yeah the image is here i'll take an image from here i'll take this image right and i'll take this version and i'll save it cd repo git status so there is a change if i do a git diff so the image has been changed if i do git add dot git commit i can name change image and i'll do git push origin main so the it has been pushed right and if i go here and refresh it so the image has been changed right and yeah okay let me do one thing let me go inside again it will the uh, argo cd what it does it pulls after three minutes it pulls the repository after three minutes so it will wait after three minutes interval it will poll the repo if there is any change we can trigger a manual polling using the refresh if i do a refresh it will show me out of sync and if i do app diff i can see what the change is this is the previous state and if i scroll down and it is highlighted it is saying that the image was ubuntu apache and now it is some different image so this this is the change so do you want me to apply if i do a sync it will be synced and otherwise we can leave it to it so this can be thought of as a continuous delivery where let's say our admin will sync it and will click synchronize so what it will do it will create pods the new pod if i do kubectl get pod i'll give it a watch and i'll see the new pods are running are container creating and the old pod is terminating and they are terminating right i can see it from here too and uh, let's wait for all of them to be in the running state and yes they are all in the running state right so if i refresh this i should see a change right and if i do yeah the it has changed it's hello world in blue so here we can see that once the change is done to the github repo uh, it the change will instant be, be reflected and we can also configure git uh, github webhook for it and the last thing i want to show you uh, how is how is argo cd keeping track of what the resources it created right so for that if i do kubectl get deploy hyphen in knowledge apache and this is the deployment name right so if i do and i'll see its yaml so th here the most important part is the label this label shows the argo cd dot argo project dot io instance apache 2 this shows how argo cd is keeping track of it how argo cd is keeping track that this deployment is managed by argo cd and some the other things i'll show you kubectl get applications so this is Get, get applications hyphen a so this is the application name argo cd apache 2 sorry namespace apache 2 this is the application name this is a custom resource definition created by the argo cd itself and if i open it if i do give cdl get applications i can argo cd i can oeml so it will show me the main part the destination and the source so using this application we can deploy anything we want any application we want we can 
configure the source and the destination and as an ending note i'll show you how we can create it using a file i'll just give it nginx a project default i'll set it to manual auto create namespace repo url and i'll give main and i'll path the different path i'll pass the different path if i go to code in the dev i have some yamls too i'll pass that path and i'll say cluster url knowledge nginx and what i'll do i'll not create it from here i'll take the yaml from here and i'll create a new file i will create a new file application dot yaml and I'll paste it here and I'll save it. I think it's created here. Yeah, so application is created here. I'll do I'll cube CTL apply hyphenate. And the main thing is that it needs to be deployed in the namespace where the Argo CD is deployed. Namespace will be Argo CD, right? So I think it's Argo CD. Yeah. So it has to be de deployed in the namespace where Argo CD is deployed. So the namespace is Argo CD and I'll apply the application. And if I go to the GUI, I can see another application is created. So if we want to track all, all these applications, all these configurations in the same repo, we can just commit it to a different folder. Let's say a different folder and which is not tracked by the GitHub repo, by the Argo CD right we can do that and we'll have all the deployment informations and configurations with us and we there will not be a chance where we miss any of them and i'll do a manual sync here and it will sync them it will take a time yeah it is the four pods are running the ingress is getting deployed and i'll wait for a few seconds till it is deployed and yeah one more thing the application yaml right the application yaml can also be tracked by argo cds it doesn't mean that argo cd will only deploy the pods or services if i have a folder of these applications and if i tell github uh, argo cd to track those applications it will also deploy those applications so argo cd is not only restricted to only the basic configuration it can also keep track of all the custom resource definition or anything so it is taking a bit of time. I'll get the ingress, cube CTL, get ingress, admin, Alex, <coughs> Nginx. Yeah, the IP is given, it is healthy. I'll copy this and it will, it should show me. Yeah, it works. So it is working, right? So that was all the demo. So uh, I can uh, safely conclude that any changes made to this repo will trigger the Argo CD. Argo CD will pick up those changes and will insist on deploying them to the cluster, making the state equal. And if it is manual, so we have to manually approve it, or if it is automated, it will automatically deploy those changes. So that that is it for the demo. And if you have any question, uh, you can go on. Am I audible? Yes, yes, Dipan, you are. Yeah. Hello. Abhishek, I think uh, you are audible. You need to be a little closer to your mic. Okay. Am I audible now? Yeah, Abhishek. You yes. Are. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Yeah. I can hear you. Yeah. Uh, is there any alternative of uh, uh, Argo CD? Yeah, there are alternatives. There is a tool called Flux CD, but uh, the Flux CD, what it does for now, uh, until now, it does not did not provide the UI, right? But in the newer versions, they are planning to bring up an UI. It, there is Flux CD, which does these same things uh, like Argo CD. But Argo CD has a slightly upper hand because as you saw, there is a good ui and one thing i did not show you uh, we can just do history and rollback and let's say i want to roll back to this version i can just do a rollback and it will get rolled back rolled back and moreover argo city has some 
other products like Argo rollouts, image updater, Argo rollouts for different uh, updating strategies, de uh, deployment strategies. So there is Flux CD, but Argo CD is in the rise now. I hope that clears your doubt. I will say. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, anyone? Any questions? Okay, so I don't think so. People have questions. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Dipan, for this com complete power packed session. And thank you, everyone, for joining in. You must have received feedback from by this time. I would request everyone to open it and fill it right away so that you know the pan can get the feedback of this session and obviously you people are free to unmute yourself and let us know that how this session went uh, i can see the reactions but it would be more appreciable if you can unmute yourself and let us know that how was the session and very clearly described by you so and by the way great demo also thank you Vidush. thank you Thank you. Thank you, Vidoshi. Demo and very informative. Uh, very nice demo, Dipan. Thank you, Abhishek. Thank you, Diksha. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, I love to uh, hear the voices of other people who are not representing or presenting the slides. This is wonderful when you know we do appreciation and it encourages the host any day. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Thank you, Dipayan, again. Thank Have you, a wonderful friend. weekend ahead, guys. Good evening. Thank you.